how to break past any plateau in results. If you've been on any sort of journey, whether it's muscle building, weight loss, or just improving your health, you've probably experienced some sort of plateau. And the last thing you want to do is stay stuck in that same position. So today, I'm going to break down two different aspects of breaking through a plateau. Number one, how to prevent and break past any muscle building plateau, and number two, how to break past any weight loss plateau that you may have experienced in the past or you're currently experiencing now. So let's dive right into this. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Coach Tyler. I've been a personal trainer and online coach for the past six years, and I've helped over 455 clients completely transform their lives. And I'm going to use that experience to teach you how to break past any plateau. The first aspect of hitting a plateau I'm going to break down today is muscle building. And I'm going to give you four tips on how to break past a muscle building plateau. If you've been here for some time, you know how important it is to build muscle in order to speed up your metabolism, to see even better weight loss. But also, if you're trying to shape and sculpt your body, building muscle is the best and easiest way to do that. So one of the most common things I see is people doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different outcome. That is literally the definition of insanity, and a quote by Albert Einstein. Now, in order to break past the plateau, you most likely need to change something you're doing. So when it comes to building muscle, what I tend to see a lot of people do is they stick to the same rep range. And so what we have to do is we need to shift that rep range. If you're always lifting heavy, you need to shift that rep range to maybe doing, you know, 15 to 20 reps to completely change. Here's the thing. Every rep range, whether that's one to six reps, eight to 12 reps, 15 to 20 reps, all of them build muscle. And the one that's going to be best for you is the one you're currently not doing. So you need to do the rep range that you never really tend to do. This is actually going to send a new muscle building signal to your body and ultimately help you continue building muscle. Typically, people will plateau anywhere between three to six weeks of doing the same thing. So I like to phase our clients' programs. Every four weeks, we change rep ranges to prevent them from hitting plateaus. But if you are stuck in a plateau, like I said, step one would be to look at your rep range. And if you're always in the same one, go ahead and change that. You will see a breakthrough in your muscle building results. Number two is tracking your volume or tracking your workouts in general. If you have no idea what you're going to do every day you show up to the gym, how do you know you're actually progressing? How do you know you're getting stronger? How do you know what you're actually doing? So number one is tracking your progress, tracking your exercises, the weights, the sets, the reps. If you are aware of those things and you're not seeing any change still with your muscle building, sometimes it could be as simple as actually just increasing the amount of volume. So maybe you're doing three sets of chest. Maybe you're doing six. Maybe just adding one set to each of those exercises will actually help you continue pushing forward. Typically for muscle building in a beginner, we like to do 10 to 15 sets per muscle group per week. For someone more advanced, I like to do around 20 sets per week, So, and somewhere in between for intermediate lifters. So find that sweet spot, and sometimes it can be as easy as just increasing some volume. By the way, to calculate volume, it's sets times reps times weight. That's going to help you get an idea of the actual number of volume you're using. Again, this is a little more advanced, so don't worry about that if that's not you. You may be someone, if you're more beginner, that you just needs to actually track what they're doing. Number three when it comes to muscle building is frequency. Too often I see people are only hitting chest or only hitting legs once a week. We do not follow that methodology with our clients, or that's not even what I do. I don't follow some typical bro split of chest and tries, back and buys, legs, shoulders and arms, all that good stuff. I don't do that. What we do is we do full body workouts three days a week. 
two to three days a week to be exact. And ultimately, sometimes what you need to do is have more frequency of hitting that muscle group. So let's just say you hit a plateau on trying to grow your arms, but you're only hitting them really hard once a week. Sometimes what we like to do with our clients is turn up the volume a little bit on those arm days, but we like to do them three days a week. So what we will do is have arms at the end of every workout three different days of the week, and that frequency will add more volume and also increase the how often you're hitting that muscle group, which will continually send a signal to your arms like, hey, I want you to grow. And I'm telling you that three days a week instead of just one. So that's another way you can break through any plateau. And last, when it comes to muscle building, the number four on the list of breaking past the plateau is doing exercises you suck at or the ones that you commonly avoid. So one thing I see way too often is people skipping squats. I know squats are not the most fun and exciting exercise. You probably skip it because you suck at them, you have poor mobility, but I'm telling you, if growing your legs is something you're trying to do and you're skipping exercises like squats, like deadlifts, like lunges, the chances are that you're gonna see the best results doing that exercise you skip. Another example of this is people who tend to skip doing exercises that they don't know how to do or don't enjoy doing. So find those exercises that you tend to have an idea of, but you're afraid to do them because you're not sure how to do the form or technique. By the way, there's like hundreds of videos online and on YouTube and of people instructing how to do form properly. So don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Try new exercise. The best exercises for you are the ones you're currently not doing, just like the rep range, just like your frequency. The thing that you need to do is provide a novel stimulus to your body. And by the way, it's almost the exact same thing for your nutrition. We'll get there in a second. And the last little bonus tip for muscle building is that this one's kind of a no-brainer, but if you're not eating enough protein, good luck trying to build muscle. You will not build muscle if you're not eating enough protein for your body. Take your body weight or goal weight, multiply that by 0.8 to see the minimum amount of protein you should be consuming on a daily basis. If you wanna maximize your muscle gain results, eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and that will definitely help you move closer to your goals. Now let's talk about a weight loss plateau. 99% of the time, this is an issue with your nutrition. So I'm gonna give you four tips around your nutrition on how to prevent or break past a plateau in your weight loss journey. So one important thing we must understand about the body is that it is an adaptation machine. It's going to adapt to any environment we put it in. So if you're eating super high calories, your metabolism will most likely adapt to that eventually. And when we are starving ourselves too often or not eating enough calories, our bodies will tend to adapt to that. So if you're eating 12 to 1500 calories on a regular basis, your metabolism will slowly tamper down to meet that demand of the food. Your body's always fighting to find homeostasis, that sweet spot, and it's always going to meet it where you want it to go. And so if we're always in a deficit, your metabolism will kind of meet you at that point. So sometimes the easiest way to break through a weight loss plateau is actually eating a little bit more food and then going back to that deficit. So this is what we call diet breaks with our coaching clients. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll try to focus on eating in a deficit for eight to 12 weeks. And around that point, we tend to find our clients start to plateau on their weight loss. So we will take a week, add two to 500 calories for a week, and then come right back and they'll start to lose weight again. So that's one way you can break through your weight loss plateau. The second way to break through a weight loss plateau is actually increasing protein. So one of the things that we tend to find is that a lot of people have a hard time with either cravings or wanting other foods, not feeling satisfied or not being completely full from food. So one of the beautiful and most amazing benefits you get from protein or a high protein diet is satiation, meaning that you feel more satisfied and full after eating food. So sometimes simply just increasing your protein intake, number one, that helps with muscle building and speeding up your metabolism. And number two, it actually helps you prevent you from wanting or needing other foods, from being hungry all the time. This will help prevent you from binge eating late, late at night, but also make you feel more satisfied from the meals you're already eating. 
Now, the third way to prevent a weight loss plateau is actually sleeping more. Sleep has a ton of impact on our weight loss journeys. Number one, and most awesome thing about sleep, it's free. You don't need to spend any money to get more sleep. You just have to plan ahead. By the way, I made an entire video on how to improve, how to fall asleep faster, how to sleep better, how to get better quality sleep, and most importantly, how to wake up with more energy on a daily basis. So go watch that video. I'll tag it somewhere in the description below. But as it goes for sleep, sleep also has a huge impact on our cravings. When you have less sleep, it tends to increase the amount of cravings you have on a daily basis. So this can definitely contribute to our weight loss or take away from our weight loss journey if we're not getting good quality sleep. This also helps with recovery from our workouts, which again is gonna help contribute to better results. So don't sleep on sleep. Sleep is gonna be an important factor on seeing great results, whether it is muscle building or weight loss. And the last tip I have for breaking through a weight loss plateau is tracking your food accurately. I did a bunch of reading before I filmed this video and I found out that actually 72% of people that track their food overestimate how much they're actually eating. So this might be a good time for you to make an investment a $10, $15 investment into a food scale so you can accurately weigh and measure your food. This is actually one of the problems I have with going out to eat. You never really know how many calories are in it because, you know, at Chipotle, for example, the scoop you're getting isn't always the same or the size of the food that you're getting at whatever restaurant you choose isn't always the same. So sure, it could show the calories on the menu, show the calories online, but it's not always that accurate. So making your own food and actually weighing it is going to make a huge difference in the accuracy of the amount of calories you're consuming. So eating at home is going to be a much better way to accurately count and track your food so you can actually see how much food you're consuming on a daily basis. This also reminds me of food labels. You know, one of the weird things that I learned is that food labels, say whether it's on a protein bar or any packaged food really, is the FDA actually allows a 20% wiggle room on all calories on a nutrition label. So as you know, protein bars are typically advertised as being a high protein, low calorie food. But what most people don't realize is that it would probably be in their best interest to make their calories 20% lower on that bar so they can sell it to you more. Without us even realizing we're eating more than they're actually telling us. So be mindful of the calorie labels and the food you're actually consuming because it may actually be more than you think it is. So that being said, I just gave you eight amazing tips on how to break past the plateau, four for nutrition and weight loss, and four for building muscle. I hope you found a ton of value in this video and I hope you can go implement these things. And what I would love for you to do is come back and let me know, shoot me a message on Instagram or drop a comment on the YouTube video and let me know if and how it worked for you. And if it didn't, let me know as well. I can give you more tips and advice on how to break past this plateau that you're currently stuck at. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you again for coming and watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.